It's week 10 of the championship meet here at Gulfstream Park, Wednesday, February the 4th through Sunday, February 8th, with the feature day being Super Saturday, February the 7th, Don Handicap Day, where Fox Sports 1 will televise both of the Grade 1 features, the Grade 1 Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap and the Don Handicap. Let's see how this 10th week played out. On Wednesday, the 4th, I kicked off the week with not one, not two, but three winners on the day. Top of the stretch. Keymet not giving in yet. Made from Lucky on the outside, dead even with him with a furlong to go. Made from Lucky, and Keymet just keeps on battling on the inside. Made from Lucky's got the lead, though. Keymet starting to give way late, and it's a long way back to the others as Made from Lucky edges away to win it by a length and a half over And they're coming toward the top of the stretch, and it's Wildcat Pleasures off the turn in front. Little Tom dreaming of Pete's got room now. British Glory's on the far outside. Coming through at the fences, Go Go Romeo. Right there, too, Sun Bio, Mr. Sutton, but it is Wildcat Pleasures. Wildcat Pleasures and Edgar Zayas have the lead as they come down to the line, and they're going to win it by a length in the end. They're into the stretch. Mrs. McDougal runs for the lead. And at the eighth pole, Mrs. McDougal has taken over. Love's Illusion is second. And then it's enthralling. And they're coming to the finish. And it's a flashy debut for Mrs. McDougal, winning it by four lengths in the end. I contemplated coming out to the races on Thursday, but the weather called for heavy rainstorms. And sure enough, we were off the turf and a sloppy main track as they only had one winner on the day. He's on the extreme outside and about to move up alongside of Kuliki Taka for third. Up front, it's Mock My Day and Tito time, though. And they're five lengths out in front of Lavandero. Mock My Day on the inside, Tito time on the outside. Two of them come down to the line together. Mock My Day by an Eck. bounced back strong on Friday, although it didn't look that way early, as I ran second twice in a row. Oh, but then the last three picks of the day, winner, 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 and at big prices. And these two turn for home together. Defense article runs by and takes over the lead and moves away now to a three-length advantage in mid-stretch. And then it's Bellamy Storm trying to cling to second, followed by Seventh Son and Garabato, but defense article has it won. Defense article and Edgar Zayas well in control under the wire. They're going to win easily. The As they come to the top of the stretch, three quarters and one, twelve and three. And McElroy draws up alongside a flashlight. These two with upgrade coming on in third. McElroy, flashlight keeps on fighting on the inside. Upgrade is coming. Hammers terrors on the far outside. And then comes Yari. They're coming to the line. And here's upgrade. And upgrade will beat McElroy. And on the far outside, Ice Festival comes on with season ticket. They're into the stretch. And it's Whispering Angel in front. Nikki's Brown Miss takes a crack at her. Gaining ground late on the outside is Get Down Kitten. Farther out comes Ice Festival. And these four coming down to the line. It is Whispering Angel who digs in and holds on. Over Just goes to show you never know when your racing fortunes are going to be on the upswing. Three for six, only six plays, and profited almost a hundred dollars on Friday. It is Saturday, February the seventh, Don Handicap oh, Day. Yeah. They're off for the Don Handicap. Third was the first of the multiple stakes races on the day. It was five furlongs on the turf. The Texas Glitter Super Colossal had last been seen in the Breeders' Cup Juveniles, but the daily racing form made him 12 to 1.
Are you serious? He was Ron Nicoletti's best bet of the day. It's one to nine when the betting open. Floated up to even money. I tripled the bet. Stalk the pace on the Chocolate outside. Wildcat on the outside and coming up the fence, Moon River. And Moon River got through on the inside and comes with a rush up the rail. It is Moon River and Super Colossal. Super Colossal on the outside to the front. Super Colossal wins the Texas winner. Super Colossal, first stakes winner of the day. The six at Gulfstream is a maiden special weight for three-year-olds, and we were going a one-turn mile. My top pick was number 10, Danzig Moon. He debuted at the Tough Keeneland Fall Meet, and he was even fourth in what turned out to be a key race as the winner came right back to beat winners. But then the key to handicapping this race was his next one. He went a one-turn mile, same as today, at Churchill Downs. And in spite of a slow break and five-wide trip, he was flying on the outside. He was second best and he clear of the show horse. Today, the only problem was Julian Leperu. I just wrote in my analysis, please give him a good trip. Kept him wide, almost too wide, into the turn. Made a big move, five wide. And here's Danzig Moon on the far outside. Up alongside of Saraguaro, the sixth man back running in third, and they're into the stretch. Three quarters in one, 12 and four. And Danzig Moon and Julian Leparu are moving away. And they're moving away by three in mid stretch. Saraguaro and the others left behind. Our right. Commodore is third. Danzig Moon, who comes home and convincing time like winner Saraguaro. Doubled the bet. Nice. Second winner at Gulfstream. The tenth at Gulfstream was the first of the graded stakes. It was the grade three Swanee River. Thought it was a wide open race. My top pick was number eight, Sandiva. I had had her back in December when she won the Tropical Park Oaks for Todd Pletcher and Javier Castellano. And she paid over ten dollars that day. I wasn't willing to go too deep because I saw this race going many different ways, but man, Sandiva was strong today. Stalked outside, big move Here on comes the turn. Sandiva with a rush into second, and she sets her sights on Skylander Girl as they come to the top of the stretch. And Sandiva runs alongside of Skylander Girl, and they turn for home together, and Sandiva has taken the lead. Scampering squeezes through on the inside, and then it's Skylander Girl. Well. No too sharp front, but it's Sandiva from close to home, and Sandiva and Javier Castellano and from Swanee River. River. Paid 6.20. Nice. First graded stakes. Three wins today at Gulfstream. The grade one Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. I like number one, Mashawish. Christine Bosanaka said if this race was based on looks, this guy was going to run away with it. His connections had made the remark after the grade two Fort Lauderdale when he was wide throughout that this horse really was talented, but he liked to be cover up. So when he drew the one hole today, I thought that was really good news, except would he be able to get out in time? Well, he rode the rails into the far turn and then nowhere to go! Ran Tito is second. Mashawish waiting for running room. War correspondent circles up outside of slumber. Amen Kitten and Lochte are riding at two and Manchurian High on the outside. They're into the stretch. Golden Rifle. Grand Tito. Slumber on the outside. War correspondent Mashawish has got no place to go. And Lochte is right there in between horses. Imaginings trying to squeeze through at the fence. Mashawish got through. Mashawish on the inside gets through. Oh yeah, Mashawish tripled the bet. That's my fourth winner today at Gulfstream and my second graded stakes and my third stakes overall. The featured finale at Gulfstream is a grade one $500,000 Don Handicap. So I went back and forth about whether I wanted to back Lee or Constitution, the Florida Derby winner. Finally, I decided, you know what? Constitution just might try to steal it. He's got Javier Castellano. He's a perfect three for three here. And then earlier in the day, the Fred Hooper, the one-two finishers, just wicked on the front end and never stopped. And I'm like, it's Constitution today. Broke sharp, dueled with Commissioner to the far turn. Lee and now they his make move. their way to the top of the stretch. Three quarters in 111 flat.
And it is still Constitution Commissioner, and Lee is on the inside. Just in behind the leaders, Joel Rosario, looking for a place to go at the top of the stretch. He's going to come outside of Constitution, and now Constitution has a two-length lead. Lee comes after him. El Nawi is closing in the center of the track into the final 16th. It's Constitution drifting out, holding off Lee as they come down the finish. Constitution! Constitution! Constitution wins again! It's my fourth stakes, third graded stakes, and fifth here at Gulfstream. Almost 40 bucks on Constitution. It's a great day here. at Santa Anita is a national showdown race. At least that's the way everybody's billing it. California Chrome against Shared Belief. Everybody likes California Chrome as the horse of the year. Not me. I think Shared Belief is much the best. I made him my Santa Anita bet of the day under Hall of Famer Mike Smith. win on shared belief in the grade two San Antonio. Woo! Best of the day out west. Closed out the week on Sunday, February the 8th. Well, well in control at the top of the stretch. Now it's four, five, six. It's Desert Valley running up the score. And then it's Birthday Girl, followed by McLovinett to the outside, Bunnell and Tiz Cha Cha, but they're way behind Desert Valley. Desert Valley, much the best. One a 45 and four half mile, and they're into the stretch, and it's Blame Jim, taken on by stablemate Stanford. Stanford goes on by. Stanford on the outside to the front. Blame Jim, left behind, cool man walking, and then comes Honest on the outside, coming down to the line. Stanford wins. Blame so it was a good week at Gulfstream. We'll look forward to next weekend. And then in two weeks, it'll be Fountain of Youth Day, but we won't be here. We'll be in New Orleans for Risen Star Stakes Day at the fairgrounds.